Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, or in this case, welcome to Driven, uh, a new little series I plan on doing for my racing adventures over the course of the next few seasons. Just quickly, this kind of video here is completely stolen from David Perrell and his Driver's Eye series. I'll explain a bit more later in the video, but for now, let me shut up and uh, let you listen to the sound of my qualifying lap, uh, the British GT season finale in my BMW M6 GT3. So, my channel. Uh, to be honest, it's been a bit of a patchy operation so far, and I'm not going to lie, there's been very little in the way of interesting content. Um, for me though, now I've moved into uni, I have the ability to structure my daily timetable much more flexibly, so things like this will hopefully be something I can do more in the future. And uh, it will hopefully allow you and I to look back at just what goes on in the driver's head in this series, such as this. So, that lap you just saw was my qualifying lap of British GT season finale at Donington, just under a month ago now when I'm recording this. I know it's so long after it, but it was just an idea that came into my head recently. Uh, yes, that lap, it was pretty decent. It wasn't a perfect lap by any means, but it was good enough for second in my session. And once my teammate Jack Mitchell put in his time, um, the aggregate time was good enough for fifth overall uh, for the race on Sunday. And the weather's a lot different, it's a lot colder, the wind's picked up a little bit. Not a bad feat for us, really. We struggle with our tyre attempts usually, so this works just fine for us. So, starting the race P5, um, it's interesting being in a class such as this, with all of these high-level drivers, and the competition here is just fierce. So, qualifying above most of these guys is actually really cool for someone like me, who's still new to this, but I, I digress. Uh, going through to the start of the race now, Two by two, I've got my teammate Dominic Paul, the CEO of Costa Coffee on my left. Uh, Graham Davidson just positioned in front of me, Ian Loggy in the Mercedes. And then the front row is the Bolf McLaren that completely checked off up the road. No one saw that after turn one. And Adam Ballon in the Barwell Lamborghini Hurricane. But as you can see, the red lights have stayed on. And the safety car stayed out. And I'm going to go and explain this again in uh, the near future. But... There was a crash with some of the GT4 cars on the rolling lap. I mean, I'm not sure how you really do that, but anyway, um, I'm, I'm not going to talk much about that more because it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with me. But um, around five or six minutes later, we do finally get going. Now, the interesting thing with this race is that our pit-to-car radio wasn't working, and it wasn't working the whole weekend, so I was relying off of an old standard old-fashioned traditional pit board that was being held up by my team manager Les but uh, the race has got going now and just taking it nice and easily the single file start was definitely less chaotic it allowed me to kind of hold on to P5 I would have liked to move forward maybe if there was a double file start but I'll definitely take holding position for now so just going down the craners following Graham Davidson and the TF Aston down into the old hairpin and you can probably tell from this so I'm just I'm not pushing at all I'm taking it fairly easily 
uh, not working the car too hard. I want to see what the rest of the competition is like early on before I start to really wind up the pace. Um, yeah, the, the interesting thing with what I'm racing in this series is that I'm in the Silver Cup. Now, what that means is that myself and my teammate Jan Mitchell were both silver graded drivers. And um, whereas the traditional GT3 driver pairing would be a gold or a platinum driver, such as your Nicky Teens, or your Ross Guns, or your Rob Bells, and then you have a bronze driver or an AM driver, as you see Ian Lobby make a late move into the Melbourne Loop on Ballon, and he gets the move done, which is kind of good for me because one thing you'll notice very quickly is that we've really struggled in this last sector. And traction is not the M6's strong point. Um, try as I might, it's really difficult to stay anywhere near someone out of the corner like that. But um, going back going back to the Silver Cup thing, yeah, part of being a Silver Cup pairing is we have to carry 30 kilos extra. Now that doesn't sound like a huge amount. I mean the car weighs around 12 kilos on its own. Uh, so 30 kilos you think wouldn't make that much difference, right? Wrong. And um, you'll notice later on that my pace at the start is really strong as the tyres are still fresh. Later on into the stint, the car really really starts to drop off quickly, uh, especially compared to the rest of the cars. This car's not the best on its tyres anyway, and the 30 kilos really, really, really hampers it around a circuit such as this, which is hard on brakes and tyres as it is. But, um, yeah, we, we, can, we can cross that bridge when we get to it. So the three cars ahead of us now are still battling, and I'm definitely quicker than all three of these, really, but I don't want to go for anything stupid so early on in the race. I'm gonna. Just show my nose to Davison, and he definitely knew I was there, but kind of shows me the grass, and I have to back out, uh, which I completely understand. It's not really that unfair, I suppose, but I need to try and get a move on sooner rather than later. Part of being Silver Cup is that, obviously, I started the races with the AM drivers. Now, I'm quicker than 99% of these AMs. The only car that was quicker than me in qualifying was the Golf McLaren, but as you can see, it's already out of camera shot, as that car was off up the road, never to be seen again. So I need to try and build a gap over these cars that I'm around in my stint before passing over to Jack. Then once he is in the car, uh, the pros will be in the Pro-Am cars with a lighter car. They will be quicker than him, that's just how it works, it's how it's meant to work. So my stint's quite important for building the kind of cushion that will allow Jack to hopefully not come under fire later on in the race. But um, yeah, this is around 10, 12 minutes into the race now. The field's starting to spread out. I ha I'm still being held up by Davison, as you can see. He just goes in really deep here, gets a little bit of a wobble, and I'm gonna, again going to show my nose and again get shown the grass. So I'm getting a little bit tetchy, i say. I, I really want to get this move done now because I'm being held up maybe a second, second and a half a lap behind Graham in the Aston. So showing my nose, flashing the lights, all that jazz. I'm um, going through Coppice now, just on the run down to the to the uh, Fog TSs. I know where I can make a move and I know there's only one real place on this track that's even going to allow me to pass and that's into the Melbourne Loop. It's in the last sector, we're really quick in the high speed stuff as you can see here, just catching that curve just perfectly. I'm lining myself up for maybe a late move into the Melbourne Loop, yet we're going to leave it late and show our nose at the last second. Davidson has to leave us from as we're already there, but uh, we do get the move done and we're up into P4 within 10 minutes of the race starting, which is great news, and hopefully push on a little bit more after this. Uh, but yeah, that's the only corner I could pass in. Literally the only corner on the track that I would even be close enough to have a look. We were really quick in the high speed stuff, and then we really struggled in the slow speed stuff, so I had to make it just before we were weak, and then spend the rest of the lap catching up or pulling away, depending on what it was. But um, literally this is one or two laps after getting past Davidson. As you can see, we're already on the back of battling it in the hurricane and again get going through the chicane really nicely he's going to cover the inside half I go for the inside gap and it's not quite going to be there I don't think I bumped him but uh, it was definitely really close but you can see exactly where our weak point is as that hurricane off the hairpin just checks out leaves me standing as I'm just lighting up the rear wheels so Melbourne Loop is literally the only place I could pass because the rest of the lap I just then playing catch up really I wouldn't really get much of a chance until there but um, this Cayman, the GT Marks Cayman, does me, does me a bit of a favour. Pulls up Ballon a bit, and I know I need to make the move this lap. So Ballon's going to defend. I'm going to show my nose. I'm not trying to pass him around the outside per se. I mean, obviously, if he 
slows it down to a crawl, I'll obviously swing around the outside, but I was just trying to see what he, how he'd react. And in a scenario like that, it's worth just filling the mirrors, making sure that the AMs especially, they're more susceptible to making mistakes under pressure, so just keep on applying the pressure. Again, showing my nose here. I'm, of course I'm not going to go for moves into the fault DSs, but keep showing your nose, you'll never know what happens. And there you go, Balan goes in a bit deep, I get the exit. Uh, get my nose alongside. He's going to squeeze me, but I'm there. And I know I'm there. He knows I'm there. And I just control the corner, get the car stopped, get the car straightened up again, and just punch out the other side. The Lamborghini is going to come back on me on the exit, but yeah, he wasn't able to get the move back done. Of course, I'm a silver driver, and I need to get my foot down and pull away now. So once I cleared Balin, I had a few laps to get my head down, and I just pushed on, trying to catch up to Loggy, who was in P2 at the time. And uh, then we caught GT4 traffic, and this was this is such a fun part of the race. Something you don't really get in a series like Blanc Pan, as all the cars are the same class. But in British GT, when there's GT4 and GT3 cars together, I really enjoy just trying to cut through the traffic as quickly as I can. So going for a late move on the Tolman McLaren, I'm not sure if he knew I was there, but it didn't really matter. I didn't lose any time. He didn't really lose any time. Uh, off the road, past the car that I started the season in, in the uh, Century M4, now obviously I moved up into the M6 and just trying to crack on and gain as many places as I can and it's been such a positive turnaround since jumping into the M6 and it's really given the team some energy again and just trying to push on and get these great results it's so nice to see how much it means to all those guys not just me uh, but also Jack and all of my sponsors I had two main sponsors at this weekend and it was great to have them there so though these kind of weekends where everything just goes right are just the weekends that you live for and they're one they're one in a hundred, they're one in fifty, whatever. So it means so much to have a great uh, weekend like this. But we're on the back of Loggy now. Challenging P2, um, I will gloss over my teary eye stuff and get back to the racing into the Fog TS's Loggy's gonna go in a little bit deep and we're gonna get a good exit again. Third time this race we've done this same move down into the Melbourne loop, can we get the car stopped? Uh, it's a little bit tighter, it's tighter than most of them, I go in a little bit deep and Loggy does get a cut back, this is really annoying, I braked a bit too early and then, because I knew I'd brake too early, I rolled off the brakes and ended up going in too deep so worst of both worlds in that scenario, so we stay in P3 for now, it's not exactly a bad position but I know I need to be moving forwards otherwise when we get to the pit stops, this 10 second penalty is going to start hurting us and we're going to start losing places now, cutting a little bit further into the race, the gaps opened up a little bit between me and Loggy. Uh, nothing dramatic, and as my tyres started to wear, I started to struggle more and more to keep up with these Pro-Am cars. But on uh, this clip quickly, I just want to show you what it's like going through the GT4 cars. So, the TF car gets out of my way, the Stella car comes back across my line, and again, massive uh, moment of overstay going down the craners. Now, I just want to point that out, that that was flat out at 130 odd miles an hour in 5th gear. And that is not something you want to do often, especially in a high-powered GT car like this. Uh, you can see that I'm working the car a lot more now that tyres are wearing. Uh, yeah, it's getting harder. It's getting harder and harder to keep on pushing. The car's starting to handle worse and worse. Of course, the fuel is burning down, which is kind of bringing some of that back, but the tyre life of with the extra 30 kilograms makes a lot more difference than burning your fuel wheel. Um, yeah, this part of the race was the only real reason I could stick with Loggy was being good through traffic. And big shout out to Niall Murray, who was so kind to letting me go by there. My teammate didn't hold me up at all, allowed me to keep on the back of Loggy. If he'd have kept his foot in, I'd have lost a second or so through that chicane alone. So big thanks to him for letting me go. Um, yeah, and we're just going flat out. As you can probably see in my mirrors, Graham Davidson in the 47 TF Aston has actually caught back up to me now. The reason behind that is purely because of the weight. Early on in the stint I was quicker, in the middle of the stint I was similar pace, and then towards the end of the stint he started to catch back up uh, as my tyres wore quicker than his did. Um, so this is crunch time, I need to keep Davidson behind and if I can I need to get past Loggy before Jack gets into my car and the pros get into the rest of the car. So but talking about uh, being decisive through traffic, a little bit of miscommunication between Loggy and one of the Tolman GT4 cars allows me to close right up, and Loggy here is going to go off the track onto the grass. He was so lucky 
not to damage his car, but he comes back on the track right alongside me and I just managed to get by before being T-boned, probably for a race ending crash. But uh, as you can see my mirrors now, that's giving me a good second, second and a half, and I need to put my foot down here. This is my time to build up as much of a gap as possible. Davidson didn't get past Loggy, his tyres were still dirty, it was time for me to go. And as you can see later on in the stint, I don't really have much more pressure from any of the GT3 cars. I do pull out a bit of a gap. And just coming into the final corner of my stint, into the pit lane, um, not really attacking the white line too hard. I don't want to get a pit lane speeding penalty, and it, you know, I only, I, I'd only lose a few tenths by doing that. So it was really important just to take it nice and safe and not lose any time. We had this 10 second pit stop penalty, so we didn't have to rush the stop too badly and uh, I knew that as long as I got everything right Jack would be more than able to get back out in time and as you can see here uh, off we go that was a very quick cut through the pit stop it was usually around a minute a minute and 20 uh, from when we stopped when we go again but uh, yeah Jack's now in the car and we've rejoined in P3 the reason being is that Loggy and Callum McLeod didn't have a pit stop penalty so they jumped us in the stops unfortunately um, but Let's give it on to the last lap now. We actually hold on to third place and two podiums in a row, two silver cup wins in a row. It's out of the last corner. Jack's going to bring the car home, two races in a row for a podium. And, well, what can I say? It was a great weekend. And um, stepping out of a GT4 for the last two rounds of the season and then in those two rounds getting two podiums and two class wins. It was an absolute fairy tale, and I'm so thankful for the team for making this move and allowing me to race in the GT3. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It's one hell of a car. Um, and hopefully, if we can afford to do it next year, I'll definitely try and do GT3 drive again. I do feel like the car suits me more than the GT4 ever did. The kind of high downforce, high grip, high power kind of car suit me more than sliding around in a, a GT4 car. This is much more towards my driving style. But yeah, P3, another podium, and another really, really strong end to the season for the team. Last year there were GT4 champions. This year, me and Jack get the team's only two podiums of the season in the last two races. In their first year in GT3, I couldn't really ask for much more. And the last challenge of this race was getting through the single narrowest garage slot you've ever seen in your life. Um, I'm not really sure why the cars have parked down here, but the M6 only just, only just about fit. Uh, it definitely wasn't a wide gap, but uh, no, Jack's, Jack's too experienced <laughs> to do something silly like that. So pulling up the Bolf McLaren 1 by an absolute mile, I should add. The Ram Mercedes came home in second, we came home in third, beating the likes of Johnny Adam, Nicky Team, Phil Keane, Seb Morris, all the pro factory drivers, and what can I say, me and Jack did a really great job for these last two rounds, I'm so thankful for all these incredible results. So there we go. And thanks for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. This is something new for me. And hopefully, if you guys enjoy it, then I can endeavor to do it in the future. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool to be sharing my kind of perspective. And I feel so thankful to be able to have this chance. Um, please leave a like and a comment if you have any feedback. I'd really appreciate anything you could say that I could do better. Um, if you do like it, then I'll do more of it. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, uh, goodbye.